So the seat pan here. Now, what I plan to do here is reuse half of the factory pan and make the other half of the pan my own. And I think there's something beautiful in that because it's something everyone has done. Take a stock part and modify it to fit your needs. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. Now the factory seat pan has some huge positives to it. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. Honda engineers from the 80s are actually pretty darn smart. Way smarter than I am and I can't out engineer them as much as I'd like to. But the seat pan has some good stuff going for it. The first thing I like, the tongue mounting point. You've seen this on motorcycle seats all the time. Cuts down on the hardware at the front. I really like that. Also, the shape of the front of the pan covers the gas tank mounting point, which I really like that as well. Cleans up the look a little bit and flows nice and clean, just like it should. Looks factory, and it is. Also underneath, you get some rubber bumpers. Good for vibration dampening, for one, but also it lifts the pan up a little bit. Gets some air underneath there, which we're going to need when we go to the upholstery shop. That leather is going to have to wrap around the seat pan and mount up, so the extra space is good. The first part of this project, like any project, it's the easiest part, and that is taking everything apart, getting down to bare metal, just to figure out what we're working with. Now the leather wrap that was around the seat is held in place with these little triangular spikes sort of underneath of the pan. I wasn't going to reuse those, so I went ahead and cut through them to remove that covering down to the foam, and then we could remove that as well. Now obviously we're not going to reuse this padding either and after 42 years it is absolutely gross. So you can go ahead and run out to the dumpster and throw that away as far away from you as possible. <laughs> now once I was left with just the pan, I took it over to the bike. I started to take inventory as to where I was going to make my final cut and where I was going to cut this factory seat pan down the middle. I didn't want to make it too far up. And where I came up with was right behind a rubber bumper that sat in the middle because I wanted to reuse it. Also, you get some space behind that section, a couple inches to work with to transition that's still flat. And then it could kick up to the rear of the seat pan. So right behind that rubber bumper is where I came up with. And then I made my cut. Now, as far as cutting through the middle of the pan, that's just gonna be a straight cut, pretty straightforward. But as you can see, we still had some overhang on the side of the pan. Now, what I wanted to do was leave that bend over a little bit, just so it covers the air gap in between the top of the frame rail and the seat pan itself. But I didn't want it to go down that far and cover the whole side of the frame rail. So I went ahead and cut it to where I thought would be nice. Now, your results may vary. So our seat pan is looking pretty promising here. We're using that factory horn at the front, which is a nice touch. I think this follows the frame rail nice along here. However, where we kind of lose it is this area right here. I don't really like how this is swooping up a little bit before the frame rail. As you guys know, the shape of the seat pan is supposed to follow this frame rail up, come over the top like that, and then you'll have the back, which then transitions into the cowl. Now this is a stamped piece of metal. Gonna be tough to work with, the best thing for us here is to just cut this curve off, try to make a piece of metal that matches the stamping, put it in there, weld it on, get a little bit, little bit of a break going for the back of our seat pan, and then we'll be pretty much done. We have to come up with a way to mount this. I think we'll drill a couple holes right here, but other than that, that is the seat pan taken care of. 
and we got to reuse some factory mounting points. Forgot the ground, it's embarrassing. It's time for this episode's giveaway. And as a thank you guys for watching, I'm giving away the Eastwood electric shears that I used in episode three. All you gotta do is subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment on either this video or for a second entry into the giveaway, you can also leave me a comment on episode three as well. And make it count because I'm picking the one that makes me laugh the hardest. But for now, let's get back to the episode. Here's what we're gonna do for the seat pan. This is the factory piece that we've sort of recovered and we're going to repurpose into our new seat pan. Here's the old rear end of it. This definitely was not going to work for us. So I went ahead and cut this where the seat pan was flat right before it started this curve. But that is trash. Here's what we're going to do for the new rear portion of our seat pan. Just like this, we have a little bit of area here and then we'll have that kick up for the back of our seat pan right here and then our cowl will be back here. Now, what we need to do first is we need to put this brake in it, and after that, we're going to head over to the B-roller, and we're going to match these style lines, these sort of stamped areas, just as best as we can in the B-roller, and then I'm going to weld this together, and boom, just like that, we'll have a new seed pan. So let's head over to the brake and get this started. So I need to transition from the factory pan to the rear of the seat pan, but that factory pan has a stamp shape to it. Down, up, kind of wavy a little bit throughout, but I figured that I might be able to match it with the offset dies in the bead roller. So what I did was I got a couple test pieces and I just started rolling, trying to match the angle of that step down, the height of the step down, and I wanted to keep the highs and the lows for each step nice and parallel. But after a lot of test runs, I got it dialed in perfectly. Now this stamp shape that I'm trying to replicate here, keep in mind, I need to feather it out back to flat before we hit that bend for the rear section of the pan. How I did it was I laid down an inch by inch grid that was three inches long. And at the start of our bead, we had three rolls of pressure in, three turns of pressure on the crank on the bead roller. So some simple math here, as you move an inch, you take one turn out of the bead roller, move another inch, take another turn out, move another inch, take the last turn out, and you'll be back to flat. We did that for each one, and it worked out great. After we were done with the bead roller, you can see our new piece of metal here matched perfectly. All I had to do was weld it together. Now the moral of the story here when it comes to sheet metal is you want to make sure everything is locked in place and are not going to jump around on you in an unexpected manner or when you pump heat into this sheet metal that it's going to warp and pull away from you. So you want to lock it down as best you can. We're using a really expensive weld table here and it's really nice to work with. However, if you don't have that, you can still buy a bunch of clamps and get the same effect. You guys know the drill for sheet metal. Tack it, make sure it looks good. Stitch up the rest of it until the weld is all the way through. Remember, use that compressed air to help cool things down in between welds. When you're working with thin sheet metal, 
it's best to try to minimize the heat you put into it, but that is not possible sometimes. And the reality is accidents happen like this accident right here where I blew through the seat pan in my motorcycle. Now, not a problem. You don't want to keep going with this. It tends to open up the hole even more if you just try to keep welding it shut until you go and grab one of these. This is a copper backer. All you do, hold it to the back of that hole and then just zip up that weld. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna act as a, an area for the weld to sit on. If it gets a little hot, it's not gonna drip down. It's not gonna continue to blow through. It's also gonna act as a little bit of a heat sink here. So once you get one of these held up to the back of the hole, it usually makes cleaning them up and filling those holes just a little bit easier. So let's flip this over and fill this thing in. So when I cut the rear of the pan off, I actually cut off the factory mounting points. They're way back there near the pillion seat, so they were long gone. I had to come up with a new way to mount this on my own. The front of the pan works just fine with that tongue and horn situation, but here's what I figured out for the rear of the pan. In the frame, we have two holes. They were a little bit big, but I wanted to use them anyways. What I did was I grabbed our plug weld kit, real simple, comes with a bunch of plugs in there and a step bit, welded them right into place, and then drilled a hole to mount up to. As far as the seat pan, what I actually did was I drilled two holes in it that align with the holes in the frame, and then I grabbed two bolts and actually welded them to the frame itself so that they'll stay in place and never move once our upholstery has covered all of that up. Then it just drops right into place, and then I could come from the underneath in the triangle area and run some flange nuts in there to lock it all down. So that is gonna be it for the seat pan, and that is the end of this episode. We do still have some work to do with this seat pan, but we're gonna revisit that at a later date in a future episode. What comes up next is the most important section for the looks of a cafe racer, and that is gonna be the rear cow. That really ties the whole build together and really completes the look, and it's gonna be the most intense metal fab work that I've done to date, so you're definitely gonna wanna see that episode, and it turns out really well. Leave us a like, leave us a comment, tell us what you like about the build so far, and if you're enjoying the series, you gotta let us know. It really helps us out. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm JD. Make sure you keep it right here at Eastwood to do the job right.